Hello and welcome back to round four of the 4 NCL. Um, yeah, sometimes you just have those games which aren't particularly great. I find that I tend to have one game per tournament where I just feel like I'm just not playing as myself. And that's not to spoil the result of this game because this game is quite a roller coaster. But yeah, there's some really uh, basic mistakes I was making in this game which really I shouldn't be making. Um, also, uh, in my defense or my excuse, at least I was playing this on my birthday on the Tuesday. Uh, so. I'm just going to chalk up my mistakes to wanting to go and eat birthday cake or being distracted by presents. Uh, but yeah, we get into the game itself. I play d4. Uh, I knew my opponent was likely to play d5. This is why I played d4 because uh, he was actually quite likely to go into a Chigorin with knight c6. And I sort of wanted to force him to play this rather than playing knight f3. Because sometimes, and I feel like this is actually one of the main advantages of playing knight f3, is that people forget their own openings when you play knight f3 against them. And then they end up in positions they're not familiar with. Uh, but to sort of make my opponent at ease, I deliberately played c4. Uh, but he actually surprised me on move 2 here and played h6. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this isn't really any opening prep at all. And at this point, you sort of have just go, well, my opponent's played sort of a, a weird move. And now I'm just going to play principal chess. There's no opening to follow. I just have to play for the center, which is what I did. So I took. I mean, the whole reason why you play c4 on uh, move 2 as white is to take in the center and play e4, so that's what I did, so I took. Uh, hit the queen of the knight, because I can't play uh, e4 just yet, and then play e4. And already, I feel like I've got an amazing position as of move 5. Yeah, and really, this is a game for me to mess up, as you'll see. Uh, but knight f6, just keep developing very basic stuff, knights before bishops, because I don't know where my bishop's going to go. And then my opponent plays bishop g4. Um... So yeah, this is just a very provocative idea. And really, if you want to punish this to the max, uh, the, the move to play here is queen b3. And sort of London style, where your opponent has developed the bishop, the weakness is b7, whereas in the London it would be b2. Uh, but yeah, really, you should just be going after this pawn. I mean, the move that I played, which is bishop uh, c4, is still fine. I mean, white is still much better, but you're not crushing. Uh, but although I make more serious mistakes later on in this game. This move is actually the move that annoyed me the most for not seeing, because it's such a fundamental thing of chess within like the first few moves to develop, play for the center, fight for control. And missing stuff like this irks me more than what I did later. Uh, but we'll see about that later. You can be the judge. So bishop c4. Uh, ideas of maybe going after this and uh, coming up with tactics. Of course, my opponent will stop this and play e6. But given that they'd played this move and this move, Perhaps I thought they wouldn't play e6, um, but even then, this is a standard game. I've got plenty of time. I should be able to say, uh, be able to see queen b3, but bishop c4 nonetheless. e6, bishop e3, just developing. I think this is fine. Uh, a6, really, <laughs> I'm not sure what the point of a6 is. I guess he does control this square, but my bishop wasn't here, so I was never going for this tactic anyway. Um, but yeah, I guess it is what it is. Uh, H3 myself, just kicking the bishop. At this point, I was really feeling like black really has gone wrong. In openings, uh, when you're playing white, especially, not so much when you're playing black, but when your opponent makes slow moves like A6 and H6, you should just be thinking, this should be game over. Like, I have a win here. And in my head, in the game, I thought H3 was the way to go. Because after bishop H5, I kicked the bishop again. I'm not really... Uh, into castling i thought i could just blow him off the board i mean casting is the best move by the computer uh, so this was again a misapproach by me and like i say although i make a mistake later this sort of opening mistakes are the thing that actually annoy me more uh, g4 bishop g6 and my idea was to play e5 the point being is that i'm kicking the knight in some lines uh trying to remember what i was trying to think here i was thinking of just like pushing him off the board this way um, sorry, it's been a few days since I played this game, because uh, I tend to record this at the weekend because I'm too busy during the week. And then possible sacrifices here, just bringing the pieces in, it all looks good, coming like this or like this. Um, yeah, but really, again, I should just be going for this idea. And now, surprisingly, I've actually lost my opening advantage. So for most of this game, I've been like plus two just because of how weirdly... Uh, black has played this game but now i've given black a way back into the game because they get to bring their knight and start trading off pieces and this is a principle and i mean it just tactically works here is that if you're down on space and you've not developed it's better to trade because then you're trading off uh your pieces and with less pieces on board it's harder to attack which is why in this position 
I got annoyed with myself. I was just like, well, I've kind of let him equalize, but this can't be. I must be able to go for something. So I play queen a5. Now, queen a4, sorry, sorry, queen a4 isn't itself necessarily bad, bad. I mean, it is a mistake. But what I followed up with after queen d7 was thinking, and this is the major fail of this game. And it's kind of, uh, sort of annoying, not annoying, it's kind of, yeah, it's whatever to show, it doesn't feel great. Um, was that I was thinking, oh, I could play uh, bishop b5 here, pinning the queen to the king, that looks good. You'd be forced to play knight c6 maybe, or c6. And I feel like that's a good position for me. Of course, he can't take because then the rook would hang. And given his play so far, he might blunder that. Then I was thinking, well, what about knight b5? Maybe knight b5 is even stronger. Because <clears throat> the problem with knight bishop c6 is I'm not really threatening anything if he plays knight c6. I didn't really see like a follow up or c6. Yeah, there just wasn't much there. If I play knight b5, then am I actually threatening to take this? Because it'd be a, a check and the queen can't take because uh, the king. Uh, sorry, the queen can't take, yeah, because the queen is pinned to the king. And that seemed quite good. It was like, okay, knight b5, then let's blow this guy off the board. Just sort of forgetting the complete calculation that I did like two seconds ago and just go well what about c6 and yeah now I'm losing <laughs> so it's not just that my knight's pinned it's that if my knight moves back then he's going to have this move and then I am just completely busted so from this position you're completely busted and you've got to try and come up with some counterplay because I'm losing, so I'm going to have to try and make this game as complicated as, as I can. And I actually managed to do that. For, so from this point, I actually play relatively well compared to having just played the opening like a complete idiot. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually sort of somewhat happy with how I played the next sort of stage of the game. So I thought to myself, the king's still in the centre. I still have better development despite losing pieces or about to lose pieces so therefore i should just blow up the center and just go try attack him and that's what i did i played d5 and this looks like an impossible move and the computer hates it and it prefers other moves and just giving up the beast etc but i thought this was quite a practical idea because there's actually a few things that uh like has to be careful of uh, so for example if he takes here which is what he did in the game i feel like it gives white some chances the line that i was scared of and the line that i didn't want him to play was to take here because it's actually really hard for uh, white to come up with any counterplay because i can take here but we're probably just going to end up trading and black is just off a piece and i feel like this was the way for black to continue but i've sort of spiced the game up enough that hopefully he'll make some mistakes and at least uh, won't go for the critical line so he did actually take on d5 and my plan here, which looks like now all my pieces are hanging, so why did I play d5 just to lose even more, was actually to take on d5 with the bishop and expose this diagonal and open up the center. Now my opponent, credit to him, he played the best move and took the knight, but it now means I get to drop the queen back and I have this diagonal, which isn't super strong because the bishop is guarding here, So, but th by no means this is winning for white, this is still bad for white, this is still just down a piece, but on a practical level, I've destroyed the centre, I've got this board to thrust down, I've got some pressure here, and I feel like I've actually got something to play for, whereas if I just gave up the piece at the beginning, then I'd have nothing to play for and I'd just be worse. Uh, so my opponent uh, attacks my queen, I pretty much have to take this. I, I can't drop my queen off. Oh, sorry, my queen off the diagonal. This is my only play. So I have to take. He takes back. And then uh, I push. Uh, because I need to open up this file as quickly as possible. I can't just let him castle for free. Uh, if he castles in this position, obviously he just loses the queen. Um, so he needs to be a bit careful. There are some tactics as well. But my opponent actually played a reasonable issue move with queen e7. No, the computer really likes bishop before check with the idea that if you take here then you can take here um so that was the most accurate way to play but queen e7 i think is fine um so i castle he castles himself uh, notably in this position castle is the only way to keep the advantage for black which sort of shows that my practical play has done something so he has to do has to come up with some uh, actual ideas here because otherwise he is just back to even and my compensation is uh, shown enough so he castles which is the best move and then I play knight e5. Peter's not a massive fan of this, but I feel like uh, I'm losing. <laughs> so I have to go for something, and this light, knight looks amazing. I'm putting all this pressure on f7. Um, there is easily a chance for him to go wrong. And luckily for me, at this point, my opponent does go wrong. He plays bishop d6, and 
despite making all of the errors that I did in the opening, sort of letting him get away with some bad moves, and then also just completely blundering it with knight b5, I'm now finally rewarded by just playing practical chess, at least I think. And um, yeah, this position's now winning for uh, white. Perhaps pause the video and calculate the winning line. So you do have to be a bit careful. Uh, there's something that you need to, there's a slight thing that you might be tempted to do here, uh, which isn't the best. So the move to play here is just takes. Now the move that you have to be careful of is if your opponent plays bishop takes f7. Because to me, I saw this when I took on f7. I thought, oh, there's a crushing move here. And uh, knight g6 looks amazing. You're forking. And uh, the bishop can't take because it's pinned. And this is just pretty much game over. Like You're at least getting some trade back. It looks amazing for white. Unfortunately for white, there's this really nice move, uh, queen g5, which I actually saw in the game. Um, so... I wouldn't have fallen for this and I would have played um, knight takes f7 I think is the way to go here rather than knight g6. Uh, but this is actually crushing all black <laughs> and all of your pieces are still hanging and the tactics you can just go through it work out for black. So this is a nasty resource that black has. So, But in this position, our opponent didn't play the natural move of uh, bishop takes f7 he actually played king takes uh, king h uh, king h7 so i can't talk properly this morning um but yeah this is now i think just game over because you can just take the bishop and my opponent took back but i mean you are losing at this point because you are being fought so this seems like a natural move to uh, do and there are some chances for black uh, if not for the force checkmate <laughs> so not really any chances uh, but there is a force checkmate in this position and it's just the idea of getting the queen over to check the king importantly making sure that you don't let the king escape with your h7 so you got to bring your queen to this diagonal first which is what i did uh, queen d3 or queen c2 are the same and he has to move the king that's the only square if he goes this way this is checkmate one uh, but if he goes this way then you can check on f5 he goes to h4 and then checkmate on h5 um, so yeah, <laughs> I managed to save this game, but it's not a game that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, I am proud of the sort of practical champs, but um, especially moves like uh, not playing queen b3 earlier is just an awful move. This h3, h, uh, sorry, g4 idea was terrible. Um, this knight g5 idea was annoying, not because it just blundered, but the fact that I even saw why it blundered because of, I was thinking about bishop b5, but then played it anyway, which is just stupid. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those games that happens. Hopefully, I'll be back to playing more better chess uh, next time around. And I was lucky in the sense that I managed to uh, win this. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and stick around for hopefully more better chess.